welcome back to the Beach Pump Bookworm. I'm Tiffany. I'm so glad y'all found me again today. My channel's all about cozy mysteries and romance books. And today I'm doing my May cozy mystery wrap up with my four favorite reads from April. So I did not do a wrap up in April. I just had the last month and a half or so, I've just been, I have had um, a couple different travel things going on and I just haven't got to it. So moving forward, just as usual, there will be wrap ups, there will be new releases. It is kind of smooth sailing until I don't have a, I don't have a lot going on as far as travel until um, later in the year. So. Look forward to that. There will be a separate wrap up for my romance books because I have read several of those and they've been fantastic. So if you like romance, make sure you check out that video in just a couple days and let's get right to it. We're talking about May cozy mystery wrap up, all the cozies I read in May and four favorites from April in three, two, one, go. Please remember to hit the like, notification, subscription. Remember, those are absolutely free, cost nothing to support us, but it means a great deal to us. I'm having the time of my life, so I can't thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So my first favorite read for April is perfect because I'm doing a book giveaway of An Escape Goat. This is the first book in the Zen Goat Cozy Mystery Series by Jana Rollins, who is AKA Paula Charles. Paula gifted and signed this for me to gift to you guys at Malice. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Paula. So how do you win this? Any of the times that I have talked about the giveaway, which I will be drawing from a random generator on the 15th of the month, if you have commented on any of those videos, I think there's been like two or three of them, you will be entered as long as you've commented subscribe to my channel and subscribe to Paula's socials, which is Rainy Day Mysteries. If you are following Paula on any of her Facebook, Instagram, Rainy Day Mysteries, you will get not only information for her Zen Goat written as Jana Rollins, but also for her hometown hardware series written as Paula Charles. First book, Hammers and Homicide. Fantastic. So good. Okay. So let me tell you about this because I finished this in April and mwah, so good. Okay, so it takes place in New Hampshire. I can now cross New Hampshire off my Cozy Mystery Road Trip Challenge. I mean, I'll still talk about it, no, you know, and then cross it off when I get to the ends because I'm doing it in alphabetical back order, but you get what I mean. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Paula. Okay, so our girl, Callie, she just uh, found some relatives that she didn't have a relationship with. Her parents were um, divorced growing up. And so um, I don't remember which side of the family, but she's never got to be around one side of her family. So she didn't know about them. So this is a great aunt and uncle that own this small farm. They are in their late eighties. They are most adorable. I loved them so much. You know how I love my seniors. Okay. So They've invited her to come stay at the farm. She really wants to eventually be on a tropical island doing like yoga stuff. But in the meantime, she's going to do a goat yoga studio and retreat at her great aunt uncle's farm. So we're getting ready for her first retreat. And it is a social influencer and her ajraj, aka a bunch of mean girls. <laughs> and... Uh, at the last minute, uh, her massage and facialist that she had scheduled to come and um, give the ladies a spa treatment, cancel. And she calls this cousin of hers, and he is absolute hysterical. He's quirky. He's fun. I love him so much. And at first, he's like, I don't have time, girl. And then she's like, oh, well, it's for such and such. I think the social influencer's name is like Angeline. And he's like, oh, because she has a lot of followers. So suddenly him and his um, companion, who is kind of um, a budding love interest for him, um, they are both available. And so the retreat starts. Again, you can imagine how mean girls behave. You, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, the social influencer ends up dead. And Callie's like, oh my gosh, is did I bring murder to my you know great aunt, uh, aunt uncle's farm? Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> So she is trying to figure out what is going on. I can't recommend it enough. Our goat here, Bugsy, hilarious. So much fun. I can't wait for the next one. I thought this was a great first book. Mm. Don't forget about your chance to win. Okay. Oh, if I did not say I gave an escape goat five cups of coffee. I loved it. I loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Next up is the fifth book in the Amish matchmaking series. Again, this was a read from April. Dating can be deadly. Put it right here. 
This is by Amanda Flower, who's one of my favorite authors and probably favorite people. She is just, she is the sweetest person. Okay, so in this one, it is summer and that means county fair time, which if you live in a small town, that is so true, okay? And there is going to be a quilting competition and it's just like bank com baking competitions in, in very, very small towns. If you don't know, they are cutthroat and I am serious. <laughs> they are cutthroat. <laughs> So true. And this year is even more so with the quilting competition because some anonymous donor has like made the uh, prize like double the amount of money that you can usually win. So there are Amish and English alike wanting in this competition and competing for this prize at the quilting fair or the quilting competition. And not only does somebody break in and like sabotage some of the quilts, but also one of the judges ends up dead. And Millie's like, holy moly, what is going on? Lois is obsessed with this new dating app. She's trying to find a husband, you know, because she's only been married four other times, five other times. <laughs> Those two characters, if you have not read this series, Millie is a uh, Am older Amish woman and she is the town's um, matchmaker for the young Amish couples. And Lois is an English woman and they are best friends. And together they are like, Lucy and Ethel. Like, I, I just can't recommend them enough. They're like one of my favorite cozy mystery duos as far as sleuthing. I absolutely love them. I gave this five cups of coffee. So much fun. My third read in April that I had to talk about was Deadly to the Core right here. This is the first book in this Cider House cozy mystery series. This is by Joyce Tremel. It was on my 24 to start in 2024. Fantastic. I gave it four cups of coffee. I absolutely loved this brand new series. So our main girl, Kate, she is a young widow, like in her mid thirties. And she finds out that she inherited a apple orchard from um, her uncle in Pennsylvania. And uh, she decides she wants to take it over, but also expand it and do like a cider house. And she has all these plans. Well, her fruit orchard manager, Carl, ends up dead. And then it comes out that Carl was doing some shady stuff. We're not sure exactly, but we know it's not above board. And Kate's like, oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into? If you like farm cozies, if you like like the the apple orchards and stuff like that, you are going to love this first book. I cannot wait for number two. I highly recommend it. I really enjoyed it. Next up and last for April, I had to talk about this one. I think that this series is fantastic. It's number two in the Divine Christian Cozy Mystery series. This is by Hope Callahan. It's called Divine Secrets. And our main character, Joe, she has started a home for when women get out of pr prison it's like a transitional housing and I love that premise I I love it so so much um it it's very relatable to me I I can't I I think Joe is a phenomenal woman so in this one they're having an open house for the town who is still very leery of having this um transitional housing in their community um, she has this open house and somebody's wallet ends up missing and then that bo the body of the person is end up found and of course people are all pointing the fingers at the joe's farm and um the women that live there and joe is she just knows that's not the case and she does not want to see these women um be judged any more than they have. And they've already served their time and they're now trying to move on with their lives. And so um, Joe is trying to figure out what is going on. I can't wait to read more of this this series. I, I gave it four and a half cups of coffee. Um, it is so, so good. It's just, it, it's so, so good. Those were my favorite reads from April. I highly recommend all of them. Let's right, hop right in to the main reads. First up on my May list was Mold to Death. This is the third book in the Colorado Wine Cozy Mystery Series. This is by Kate Lansing. It's on my sass list. It's number three. And in this one, it is Valentine's Day. And Parker's boyfriend, Reed, Parker is our main character. She owns a wine company in Colorado. She um, and her boyfriend, Reed, want to go on this romantic Valentine's weekend getaway to a ski resort, which 
you know, I was in for, I was so happy. Well, the ski resort's owner ends up dead. And although that derails their romantic getaway, of course, Barker is on the case. I thought it was a great addition to the series. I gave it four cups of coffee. Next up, I read The Walking Bread. This is the third book in the Bread Shop Cozy Mystery Series by Winnie Archer. I am loving this series. This series takes place in California, and our main character, Ivy, she is a photographer. She started taking bread lessons, cooking lessons, uh, at this shop called Yeast of Eden. I love that. This is a small Mexican bakery, and she has stayed on, and now she is working there part-time. The owner, the characters in this are so fantastic. So Yeast of Eden is going to cater this art festival. And every year they have a car art competition. And her, our main character, Ivy, her brother, Billy, always gets like second fiddle to his main rival for years. Well, the main rival ends up dead. So all fingers are pointing to Billy and Ivy is trying to figure out what is going on. This series is just amazing. The characters, the bread shop, the culture in it, so fantastic. I highly recommend. Next up, I read Death Among the Doilies. This is the first book in the Core Crafts Cozy Mystery series by Molly Cox Bryan. I cannot wait to read more of this. So, so is on my 24 to start in 2024, and I loved it. I gave it five cups of coffee, and the cover is one of my favorites because the cover has some of my favorite colors. I just can't say enough about it. So our main character, Cora, she was a counselor, so I just related to her so much. She decides that she wants to start this craft retreat um, and she's already a blocker. Her and her, a couple of her friends are starting this biggest business together. It takes place in a small town in North Carolina. And there was a murder of a librarian in town. And Cora's best friend, Jane, she has had um, a lot happen in her life. She was in an abusive relationship, um, stuff like that. Cora and her are very close. And um, Jane just has some things that she doesn't want um, discovered about her past. She just wants to move on from it. And um, unfortunately, Jane's fingerprints match at a crime scene for the murder of the librarian. And they're like, there is no possible way what is going on. And Cora is going to find out all while trying to get her first retreat off the ground. And there's this um, guy who is doing a like a craft um, lesson at the retreat. It's like for broom making. He is like this cowboy Casanova and won't leave the retreat people alone. And that causes a stir. It was just a fantastic first read. Great location. North Carolina was a really cool location. I gave this five cups of coffee. Can't wait to get to the next one. Next up, I read Buried Grievances. This is the eighth book in the Cranberry Cove series by Peg Cochran. Love this series. I'm officially caught up. It's on my sass list. So, so in this one, Monica is getting ready to have her first child. And it is 4th of July. And her college roommate invites her to watch the fireworks with him, her and Greg, her husband, Greg. And so Monica and Greg um, meet the family and right away they, they feel a bunch of tension and um, not everybody in the family gets along, just like any, you know, normal family. Um, and the grandma in the, of the family ends up dead and Monica and Greg are just trying to figure out what's going on. Greg's just trying to keep Monica, uh, off her feet because she is very close to giving birth to their first child. And Monica is, um, not letting that stop her. I gave it four cups of coffee. I mean, it was another great addition to the series. Next up, I read Baking Spirits Bright. This is the second book in the True Confection series by Sarah Fox. Holy moly. I gave this five cups of coffee. It is a holiday cozy, so you had me part way to a five-star read just by setting it during a holiday. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Okay, so this series, our main character, Becca, she works for her family's uh, confection shop, True Confections, in Large Haven, Vermont, which is... The Venice of North America. There are gondolas and canals. I love this series so much. And this one, of course, like I said, it's the holiday. So there's going to be this holiday baking competition. 
some celebrities, some locals, that sort of thing. And it's being followed by some like famous magazines and different stuff like that. Well, one of the entrants ends up dead and Becca um, immediately becomes a target herself as she's trying to figure out what is going on. She has a budding relationship with the police officer. I gave this five cups of coffee. It was a fantastic holiday, 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 cozy. Loved it so much. Next up, I read Mastering the Art of French Murder. This is the first book in the American in Paris Cozy Mystery Series by Colin Cambridge. Colleen Cambridge. This was part of my 24 start in 2024. I gave this four cups of coffee. It was so good. So this features, Julia Child is in it, but it features Julia Child's best friend, Tabitha. They are both in Paris. Julia is at Le Cordon Bleu learning cooking as we speak, but she's also touring and doing some other stuff. She just loves Paris. And she meets this American named Tabitha who um, is over there uh, visiting her godfather. And there is a murder in Julia's building. And Tabitha realizes right away that it is um, someone they met the night before at a party that Julia's sister was throwing. And so Tabitha wants to figure out what is going on. There is a lot of twists and turns in this. It was fantastic. Can't wait to read the next one. I gave it four cups of coffee. Next up, I read Four Funerals and Maybe a Wedding. This is the 12th book in her Royal Spina series by Reese Bowen. This is one of my favorite series of all time. This one I gave three cups of coffee. So let me tell you. So Georgie's her ex stepdad, one of the many. So her mother's been married multiple times. And one of Georgie's stepdads offers his estate to Georgie for her and Darcy to live in once they're married. And so she goes to make sure, like, to prepare for the wedding, but also to kind of get the house um, set up. And the staff there are so resistant. They um, don't want to listen to her. She is not the um, head of the house. They don't feel like because, you know, they're used to answering to um, her former stepdad. And they give her nothing but a hard time. The reason that I gave it three cups of coffee is because I also didn't like Georgie in this one. I felt like um, Georgie's um, demeanor just totally changed. And I know that she was trying to be um, like I am now the woman of this house. But she came across as um, really entitled and very... Um, For someone who has struggled the entire series um, herself, I, I just didn't. I just didn't like the way that she she treated the staff. And I'm not saying that the staff shouldn't have, um, you know, followed her direction. They should have, but it was just the way that she. Um, I just, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I look forward to the next reads, but I don't know that this one was the one for me. However, it was moving towards their wedding, which I love all that. I love Darcy. I love Georgie and them together. So that was so exciting. I still gave it three cups of coffee. I just didn't like that part of it. And that was a, that was pretty much the plot of the book. Next up, I read A Midlife Mountain Murder. This is the first book in the Alaska Campground Cozy Mystery Series by Julie Ecker. It is on my 24 to start in 2024, so I can cross it off the list. It was also my Alaska road trip cozy mystery uh, pick, and I gave it three cups of coffee. I really enjoyed it. I think a lot of um, what I was expecting that didn't meet my expectations was me. I think I had all these, because I was like, oh my gosh, it's an Alaska cozy, it's a campground cozy. I was, I think I over had too many expectations in my own head. So I do think that that rating is me. I will continue the series. I'm just not totally sold on it. So our main character, Vicki, she is a campground host in Alaska. She just got, um, oh, not over, but she just finalized a very messy divorce and she just decides that she needs a total change. And I, I do love that. And she is a campground host at this campground in Alaska. And there is a group of seniors that come in and she is leading a hike and one of the seniors ends up dead and that's where the story takes off again i gave it three cups of coffee i will definitely continue it 
I love the concept. I will just have to see what happens next. Next up, I read Fatal Fried Rice. This is the seventh book in the Noodle Shop Cozy Mystery series, which was becoming one of my favorite series of all time. This is by Vivian Chin. I feel like this series gets better and better with every book. Our main character, Lana, she works for her family's noodle shop called Holy Noodles in an Asian district in Cleveland, Ohio. And in this one, Lana doesn't know how to cook Asian food. And so she takes a um, cooking class to learn how and the instructor ends up dead. And so then everybody finds out she's taking this cooking class as well as Lana trying to figure out what's going on. Lana's family is fantastic. I love her love interest. I can't say, I, I love restaurant cozies. I just can't say enough about this series. It is fantastic. Next up I read, Till Death Do Us port this is the fourth book in the colorado wine cozy mystery series by kate lansing which means i am caught up and can mark it off my sass list so in this one parker's cousin is getting married parker owns a wine company in colorado and i gave this one three cups of coffee i just didn't care for the plot what the plot was fine. I really didn't care for the outcome. When they revealed what happened and more, more about the motive of why it happened, I was like, oh, oh, this is really, it just really wasn't cozy. Kind of freaked me out. I just didn't care for it. That's just a personal preference. I still gave this three cups of coffee and I will definitely continue this series if it has more books that come out in it. I love Colorado for a location of a cozy and um, I need to find more wine cozies because I do enjoy her um, wine discussion and all of her um, business. Next up, I read The Sound of Murder. This is the first book in the musical mi mystery, sorry, musical murder mystery series. This is by K.L. Montgomery. It was on my 24th start in 24. I'm killing it this month. <laughs> I gave this three cups of coffee. I will continue this series. It is on KU. It's a short series. Our main character, I cannot think of her name, Ruby. She um, is in The Sound of Music and they are touring and one of the ladies in the company ends up dead and Ruby is trying to figure out what is going on. I can't wait to see what happens next and what like musical they do next. It was, it was a good start to a, to a series. I can't wait to read more. The last book I read for May, I ended on a high note, Dying to Go. This is the first book in the Tucson Valley Retirement Community Cozy Mystery Series. This book is by Marcy Blessy. I'm going to put it right here. Of course, this is on my 24 to start in 2024. I've been talking about this forever because retirement communities are a buzzword for me. There were a ton of golden girl references and it did not disappoint oh my gosh i cannot wait to read more of these this is by marcy blessy if i did not say and our main character rosie she is her full name has all of the golden girl four of the golden girls combined Mwah! love it rosie's mom i know she doesn't but she just doesn't understand she is in tucson valley because her dad is going to have a knee replacement. Um, and a murder happens and her mom is like, Rosie, can you just stay out of it and be here to visit and like, well, basically impress my friends. <laughs> the other thing that I really loved about this that I did not know is that Rosie's from Springfield, Illinois, and I'm from Central Illinois originally. And so I was so excited. She has a lot of references to Springfield or whatnot. And I was so excited. That made me so happy because Illinois does not get a lot of cozy mystery love. It does not. It does not. I really like her um, budding romance with a landscaper that we meet along the way. I loved her mom. I know her mom was like, what other people might consider, you know, annoying and, you know, um, too involved and, uh, you know, forcing Rosie, but she's fictional and I thought she was hilarious. I can't wait to read more. I gave this, did I give it five cups of coffee? I get 4.5 cups of coffee. I cannot wait to continue this series. All right. So don't forget to let me know what your favorite book for May was. If you have any books that you think that I would love Cozy Mysteries, put them in the comments below. Don't forget to sign up for the giveaway for an escape goat. Drawing will be on the 15th. 
Let's see what else. I think that is it. Give me a big thumbs up for this video. If you're still here, give me some May flowers and may all your future reads be five stars. Bye everybody.